um, regardless of the issue. It's kind of a generalized approach, but how we need to look at pain and, and how we approach pain from a treatment standpoint. So we have a few stages of pain uh, that it moves through, that it should move through as a normal progression. So these are withdrawal, protection, and resolution. So obviously the goal is to get to resolution as soon and as safely as possible to reduce the risk of an acute issue becoming a persistent pain issue. As we uh, go into the treatment part, those three phases look like this. So the first phase is calming the nervous system via education um, and gentle movement, as well as any other pain relieving treatments ice, heat, medication, things like that. We want to settle that down. We want to do feel good things. We want to get the pain under control. Secondly, we start to move. We start to explore movement, maybe try some new movements, maybe focusing on movement in more tolerable ranges and positions first, and then getting into those positions that tend to be more painful or aggravating. And lastly is the third phase. So we're at resolution. We're trying to restore function, restore strength, restore um, our normal activity. Um, and this is kind of more of a generalized strength and conditioning program, things you're going to get out of this, this app, uh, uh, as well as a graded return to any activities, whether that's work activity, um, recreational sports, leisure activities, so on and so forth. So the resolution of pain comes about through education on your condition and pain in general and a gradual graded return to normal movement function and activity. Education has been shown through research to help reduce the threat and fears by turning down the sensitivity of the alarm system. So this is why it is important to be educated and to understand um, the pain experience and pain science um, to have a better understanding of what's kind of going on with you and your body uh, to kind of re resolve some of those fears. Graded movements, so this is kind of uh, slowly progressing movement, novel movements, pacing your activities also help reduce the threat, but continue to keep you conditioned, keep you active, and increasing oxygen and blood flow to the painful areas, which can also reduce things like guarding of the muscle, spasm, sensitivity, things like that. Also, if you are, are dealing with related or unrelated emotional or mental issues, things like depression, stress, anxiety, getting help for those, you know, through professional help, um, whether that's with a counselor or a psychiatrist, so on and so forth, um, and using things like mindfulness, meditation, relaxation training to help kind of calm things down on that end. Just like thirst and hunger are meant to bring about the action of drinking and eating, pain is meant to bring about the action of returning to normal activity. So a graded gradual, gradual return to activity rather than continuing to do at the level you were doing. Um, so we want to continue, we always want to continue moving to some degree, you know, so we, I like to use phrases like motion is lotion or move to improve, you know, the days of kind of bed rest or, you know, we now understand that causes much more harm than good. So when taking an approach to the tissues themselves, um, things like strength training, where we're going to increase muscle mass and strength of the muscles. Uh, can start to make tasks easier and also help protect our bodies for future pain and injury. Aerobic training can increase the ability of our muscles to take up oxygen, which can increase our endurance, as well as keep blood flowing to get those healthy nutrients for the healing process. Exercise can help our tissues adapt um, to stresses, to loads, which will also increase strength and endurance. When looking at approaching treatment, through the brain and the nervous system, these movement and exercises can help remap the area of the brain that represents the painful area. So, you know, we all have each, we all have parts of our brain that represent each area of their body. Those areas can kind of get a little cloudy, a little smudged when they're in pain. And so when we're, and, and the less we move that area, the, the more cloudy and smudged it can get. So, um, whereas the more we keep moving, we can kind of get a clear picture of the brain uh, has a clear picture of that body part and what it can do, and is going to be less protective of that area, less sensitive. It's also, exercise has also been shown to have a positive influence on chemical changes associated with low mood. So boost our mood, helps with depression, helps with happiness, things like that. Um, 
it can also change the release of cortisol, which is a, one of the key chemicals associated with stress. So prolonged increases in cortisol can increase the sensitivity of the nervous system to danger signals. So exercise can help kind of reduce stress, reduce pain through those chemical changes. So what if you're one of the ones that it hurts when you exercise? This is going to be more for mainly people with persistent pain. You know, certain people with persistent pain don't have that analgesic effect that exercise can bring about. So it can be hard to stay motivated to continue to participate. But we do understand that the long term benefits, while early on it may you may struggle with it, the long term benefits to you and your health and your pain can be substantial. So it's important to have this movement and exercise program tailored to each individual and to have an understanding of what you can and can't tolerate and slowly approach it by gradually increasing your activity levels, your exercise levels while avoiding, uh, trying to avoid large flare ups. So if you take small incremental steps, uh, it's going to be a more of a safer process than kind of just jumping in the deep end. So when we look at movement, we look at you know different types of movement. So we have relieving movements, and these are going to be movements that make you feel better, that decrease your symptoms. These are going to be things that we're going to rely on early on. So if you have back pain and forward bending increases that pain, then we may focus on backward bending or rotational movements or other movements that at the very least don't increase the pain, but hopefully even make you feel better. Novel movements are another uh, approach that we use early on, and these are movements that you don't normally do. These are movements your body doesn't kind of have a threatening opinion of. Um, and this can also be performing movements that are painful, but in different positions or, uh, you know, in different ways. So if you think about forward bending, so if standing forward bending hurts, but you can uh, in the back. So we'll go back to this back pain example. If standing forward bending hurts, but you can sit on the chair and, and do spinal flexion or forward bending, you're still working that movement, you're still creating blood flow, you're still um, using those same muscles and tissues. Um, so we can start to restore that movement in that position, as well as we can kind of do it in other positions. So all fours, or we can do it from the bottom up. So instead of forward bending, we're bringing our knees to the chest, which is still going to create some spinal flexion. Edge work um, is another great um, tool that comes from a, a colleague of mine, Corey Blickenstaff. Um, this is where you take the painful movements to the edge of pain and you back off and you slowly kind of push that edge when you start to feel pain or tension or maybe you feel yourself holding your breath or whatever that is and then you back off and you try to nudge that edge further and further as you get better. Imagery. This is another way to approach really painful movements. So if it's something that you can't tolerate in any position, you know, sometimes just picturing yourself performing those movements can light up those same areas of the brain that create the movement and start to turn down that sensitivity. F the frequency of movement matters. So early on, when you find a movement or movements that work, you know, performing four to eight reps every one to two hours while you're awake. So that, that short bouts but consistently throughout the day early on is going to give you the biggest benefit to promote healing, to promote desensitivity, um, and to get blood flow to that area. Lastly, it's just listening to your body. So, you know, regardless of the techniques you use, we don't want movements that flare us up or create a lot of pain or aggravation. If they do, then either back off, find a different movement, find a different version, decrease the range, so on and so forth. Decrease the reps, whatever you need to do to keep moving. Now let's talk about activity. So pacing activity. So we're going to use walking as an example for this. So the first thing you're going to do is kind of find your baseline that you can tolerate. So if we're going to use walking as an example, let, example, let's say you have some knee pain, but you can walk 10 minutes before that pain starts or severe pain starts. So maybe we start you at eight minutes. So we don't want to push through it. We don't want to even maybe at the very beginning work up to 10 minutes, but we definitely don't want to force something like 15 minutes where you're going to be in you know, significant pain by the end of it. Um, so we'll start below that line and we'll slowly build up maybe one to two minutes every day, every couple of days, however you can tolerate with the hope of over time that by the time you get to 10, that's not a problem. Then you can go up to 15, so on and so forth. This works for any activity. So this could be return to work. This could be return to sports. This could be household chores, whatever it is that you have pain with that pain limits you is finding that baseline and starting to approach each activity in that way. 
So some final thoughts, uh, you know, I want you to understand that pain is a normal process of the human body. The sooner that we accept that, the sooner we can start on the road to resolving it. Understand that pain is perceived by the brain, but is a very real experience. So it's not in your head from the standpoint of it's made up. It's in your head from the standpoint that the brain ultimately decides how much, how often, how long you're going to experience pain based on a lot of input coming in. Um, it's driven by all these inputs as well as affects those same things. So it can be driven by stress and affect our stress. It can be driven by fears and beliefs and affect our fears and beliefs. Resolving our pain is not a matter of just waiting for enough time to heal. You know, there needs to be an active approach to getting better. Um, you need to become educated, which hopefully this is a start for you. And you need to be an active participant in your recovery for successful healing and successful resolution of your pain, whether it's acute or chronic in nature. Keep in mind that throughout any healing process, any pain process, it's never going to be a straight line of getting better. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have ups and downs. That's a very normal part of all of this. So if you think of it like the stock market, um, you know, all that matters is at the end you're up here, but understanding, you know, if you keep checking that stock every day, if you're too much aware of that, hyper aware of that, you're going to go crazy because inevitably you're going to have a good day and you're going to think you're over the hump and then you may have a bad day and you're going to think you've lost everything. So understand that those things are normal. And but as long as you can look back over the longer term, weeks and months, and you're getting better, that's the main thing. And just remember, the key to pain resolution is not, you know, no pain, no gain, but K-N-O-W, no pain, no gain. Uh, the more you can educate yourself, the more you know about pain in general, as well as, as your personal experience with it, the better off you're going to be. So below, I've uh, kind of listed some books that I highly recommend. Um, Explain Pain by David Butler, Painful Yarns by Laura Mosley, Why Do I Hurt are probably the top three. Um, these are all aimed more at patients. Um, pain, the Science of Suffering is a little more of a textbook, more meant for professionals. If you're looking for, you know, more mental approach, you know, anything on mindfulness is great. Movement. So if you're looking for some novel movement approaches, things from Feldenkrais, Frank Wildman, somatics, things like that, awareness through movement. Um, as well as the strength and conditioning and endurance training, flexibility training you're going to get in the app. Again, maintaining good overall health, maintain physical health, maintaining good overall physical strength. Maintaining good mental health, good sleep habits, good dietary habits all play a part in your healing process as well as your pain, your abilities, and, and reducing the ability that can come with pain and injury, both acute and chronic. So I hope you were able to gain a lot of bit from these, a lot from these two talks. You know, this is kind of a basic understanding. We will probably go a little deeper into these areas uh, moving forward, but this is kind of just your pain pain 101, if you will, um, you know, so you at least have a basic understanding of what is going on in your body with the pain process and then how to approach that uh, from a recovery process. Again, my name is Dr. J.P. Guidry. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at johnpaul at guidrypt.com.